Hey guys, it's your Grandpa John. Come back to another Diablo Immortal video. Uh, so we have a new update coming. Uh, we got a lot of new stuff coming down the pipeline. I kind of took a slight peek at the update. Uh, quality of life seems to be definitely going to get a huge boost to it. Uh, let's go ahead and talk about it. Let's also talk about a couple of the other mechanics that are going to be coming and a couple of the other changes that are going to be happening with Diablo Immortal that I think are going to be uh, both a good, something great for the game and something that may they cause a little bit of drama. All right, so for those of you who are not already aware, I am playing Diablo Immortal again, just more so casually than I am uh, going super hard in it. Uh, honestly, I just don't feel like the time investments there to try to get Server Paragon and really push to those end game levels. I still enjoy just grinding every now and then, you know, for an hour or two a day and having fun with the game. So I think that's what I'm going to be doing personally. Uh, but with that being said, I do want to go ahead and point out some of the topics of this update that are coming because I think they're trying to also gear the game more towards players that are kind of taking the stance like I am, as well as rewarding some other players that are really going hard in the paint, right? So let's go ahead and let's talk about, about some of the, the situations going on here, right? So first things first, we go ahead and we grab down here you can see feature updates coming now when we talk about feature updates we know that that's going to be some sort of change to the game obviously it's a loose suit right here it's 36 new legendary items for this particular point however i want you to note that it's only above difficulty eight okay so hell eight is the difficulty currently to get these new legendary items now this i think is the first time that they've actually like guarded this by held difficulty. I don't know that they've done this at any other time during the game. I'm not opposed to this personally. And here's why. Now, a lot of you may may like what they have to offer. Like, I'm not an expert on the Barbarian. I'm not an expert on the Crusader. I played it and wasn't a fan. When it comes to Demon Hunter, I know a lot about the Demon Hunter. I know how to play the Demon Hunter. I know what feels good. I know what feels natural for the Demon Hunter some of these pieces of gear are something that could potentially be useful like when we talk about vengeance builds right uh, this chest i this chest item could be possibly very good especially if you are targeting so if you're someone who's like me and you're using a keyboard and a mouse uh, or an azeron keypad it's really easy to um to actually utilize the aiming right because a part of this is that you can no longer specifically target enemies uh, so this chest piece could be very good and very helpful. For some, you may say, okay, well, it would be nice if I got that earlier. Sure. But I think one of the main things that Diablo Mortals really lacked in its inception is the incentivization, right? When we talk about incentivization, yeah, yes, we have microtransactions. We have, we got to get the legendary crest, you got to go get the, the gems, so on and so forth. And that's supposed to be your incentivization. However, that's cost something physical from you, right? There's no end goal in Diablo Immortal. There's no end boss you have to beat. There's no maps that you're running to, you know, it, it's not like a lot of the other AA, AA RPG games out there. It is a strictly grinding game that you get rewarded by grinding to improve your, your damage output, essentially, by getting new legendary items and competing in PvP content. Now, obviously there's PvE, there's war bands. You guys know, uh, just as well as I do, there's a lot to do in Diablo Immortal. However, incentivization is something they've really struggled with. So I do think that having some legendary gear that is kept behind a held difficulty is very impactful and very incentivizing for players to go ahead and push up there. Myself, I'm only Hell 7 and I just entered Hell 7. I shouldn't even be here, honestly. I'm, a, I'm this, I'm a quite a bit under par where I should be. But like I said, I'm playing casually, so I'm not too worried about it. Unfortunately, I won't get to these legendary items anytime soon. But I do like the path they're kind of going with this. I think that was a very good move on their point to incentivize the players. Now, as we move down here, we also want to talk about some of the other things that are going on. So they have a rune system redesign. Now, for those unaware, the rune system was something that when it got released, we all kind of, I don't know, we all kind of just turned our head just a little bit as far as what it was and how to utilize it because we all felt that it was a resource in the game that had no value. Now they're kind of trying to rebuild that, right? They're trying to take the feedback of us saying, hey, there really is no value in your rune system. Sure, you run Legendary Crest, uh, you run uh, you know, the other crest to get your maybe one-star gems, 
and to get your runes. However, you need so many of them to make a gem, so to speak, right? Uh, that it's not all that worth it, and you always have so many extra runes that you'll never utilize, right? So what do you do with those? That mainly just becomes an account sink or a uh, a bag. Um, I don't know how it, like, um, it just takes up space in the bag. Obviously, it doesn't impact how much you can pick up, but it's just a resource that you're not really going to do anything with. So they are starting to change that just a little bit. So it looks like, if I'm understanding this correctly, Crests will no longer drop ATI runes or larger variety common magic runes. So they're re removing the ATI runes um, and the common magic runes from Crest. Now, instead, rare Crest will now drop four at AST runes and legendary Crest will drop one AST rune. So they're changing this just a little bit. Now, what's an AST rune can be used to craft bound legendary gems. Uh, basically, that means they're going to be to your account. You cannot trade them. No surprise there. Uh, but it also removed the fading amber costs associated with crafting these bound legendary gems. So the fading ambers were if you ran an elder elder run, um, you could go ahead and get the fading ambers. You wanted to max that out every week. That's kind of like the the initial. Hey, you've got to do this every day. It's part of the dailies, right? It's part of the actually not even dailies, more so weeklies. Uh, so they are changing the entire system, is what it seems to be. Fading Ambers can now be used directly at Serral to craft random unbound legendary gems. Um, these gems can be sold in the grand market or used at purchase AST rooms. Okay. Um, that's funny. So Fading Ambers can get the unbound legendary gems, which is good. I mean, that's what they should be, right? And you can sell them or you can buy, purchase AST rooms with them. British Jewelers will now one-stop shop for all your legendary gem needs. There will no longer be a need to convert runes to craft legendary gems. Uh, I don't know that a whole lot of people were doing the convert, but some were, depending on what gym you were after, especially the newer gems, right? That's something you kind of had to work on. Uh, the costs for the crafting both bound and unbound legendary gems have changed to the following. Okay, so 20 AST runes for one bound one star. Okay, 80 for a two star. Five fading ambers for one AST rune. That's a good value, I feel like. Um, 100 fading ambers for a random unbound. Okay, 320 for a ran, uh, for an eternal legendary crest. Okay, and then a five star 320 for a random unbound one legend one to five legendary gem, and 400 for a random unbound two star legendary gem. Now, okay, so they they've changed this a little bit. Basically, the notable says is it's this 20 AST runes for a bound one star, 80 for a bound two star. That's the, that's the takeaway here. Also, to smooth out the transition or reward the time investment players, Sarah will also have several new conversion functions that are intended to convert older old currencies into the new ones following rates. Uh, eight common runes for one AST, two magic runes for one AST, so one fa rune for 18th fading ambers. That's actually kind of cool. I, I do like that that's, a, that's an 18 to one ratio. Seems, seems legit. Uh, ATI rune, one ATI rune for three a ASTs. That's cool. Obviously, um, I, I think it was 22 ATI runes before I uh, got you a gem. Now it's, what is it? Uh, 20. So it's, it's slightly different. So it's actually a pretty good conversion if I'm doing this mentally in my head right. I may not be because honestly, like I said, I'm playing this more casual. However, the takeaway here is the simple fact that what they're pushing and telling you is you can convert your old currency to essentially what the new currency is going to be. This, in my opinion, is a, not a very good system my personal opinion and the reason why i say that is i know why they're doing it and it's because of the roi right they don't want people who are stockpiled already on these resources to make bank off of them right they want to kind of go ahead and suck up absorb some of those stockpiled resources because they are changing it in a better mood right or a better avenue however by doing this what they're kind of really doing is kind of I mean, they're kind of taking away resources that you've had. Granted, yes, you will never use them, you'll never see them. Most of us, myself included, I'm, I don't really make the one and two star gems. If I'm going, going for anything, I'm going for the legendary gems, I'm going for the for the crest. You know, I'm not really going for the one and two stars. I'm not looking for food. I have the gems I need for my account. I just need duplicates to go ahead and level them up to higher ranks to get more residents, right? And that's what a lot of people have on their accounts. Some will re watch this and say, no, John, I really need those lower ones. So this is very important for me. And then unfortunately it hoodwinks them a little bit because they are going to miss out on some of the potential resources by converting. However, at the end of the day, 
there are a lot of wasted resources that are on everyone's Diablo Immortal account that nobody really takes full advantage of. This at least gives you an option to go ahead and take some advantage of the resources that you have stockpiled that you'll never use. So overall, definitely a win in my opinion. Um, I don't really, honestly, I'm just not that invested to, to do the math to figure out, okay, how bad is the conversion rate here? Um, off the cuff, it doesn't look terrible. Let me know in the comments below, maybe I'm wrong. So a lot of you may say, hey, John, stop being lazy. No, I'm, like I said, I'm playing this casually. New normal gen attributes. Now this right here is where things are gonna get really shaken up. I made a video where I talked about the upcoming update with normal gems. It's probably the worst thing to ever happen to Diablo Immortal. I'm gonna stand by that. We now know what this means. So obviously we have an update here. Um, talks a little bit more about the normal gems. Normal gems now have new attributes called refinements, increase the base attributes of equipment slot to normal gem to socket it into. What that means is each normal gem you socket into is gonna change the base attribute of that piece of gear. Now the gloves are the most important part and most important item in the game because that's where you get damage, right? So damage can be had there and it can be stock stockpiled with your normal gems and multiplied with it up to I think 90% according to the data miner, which gave us has given us very reliable information so far. So this kind of proves my thought and my worry about now this becomes more of a whale's game because of needing to have the normal gems and because it's gonna allow whales to go ahead and boost their HP so much that they're gonna be able to destroy in PVP even more so. Um, however, I do like the idea that yes, it goes up to rank 10. You do get to boost your base attributes. Personally, I think that's a cool idea. I Unfortunately, I don't like how it's gonna get in, impacted and implied in the game where people are just gonna go ahead and whale out and destroy other people. That part, I don't like. However, I do think that it's gonna help balance the playing field just a little bit for some people. It's gonna help people push further a little quicker. And once again, talking about that incentivization from the Hell 8 aspect to what is now, um, like, was never a thing, right? So you have to get the Hell 8 to get that new legendary gear. This kind of helps along with that same parallel path, right? Okay, normal gym drop update. The hidden layer response rates now dynamically scale with server population. We kind of already knew that they were scaling with server population. That wasn't, uh, that was no surprise. On the most servers, this should result in the same amount or more hidden layers opening in a day. So obviously the busier the server, the better. For those of you who are thinking of server transfer, make sure your server is busy so that way you get more opportunities. You can now collect up to nine bound normal gems from bonus objectives and nine unbound normal gems from hidden layer guardians. So that is 18 normal gems a day. Okay, so keep that in mind. Chances of finding normal gems will decrease with each subsequent hidden layer run, with the first two hidden layers being the most efficient. The rewards of the uh, hidden layer entrance menu has been updated to indicate how to collect bound and unbound normal gems from the hidden layer. That's kind of cool. That's a good quality of life update. The rewards, rewards will gray out once you have reached your normal gem allotment each day, so you can easily track if gem rewards are being available for in, or, uh, if gem rewards are available before entering hidden layer. That is huge. In my opinion, that's a very good, huge uh, quality of life thing. Because when we talk about Diablo Immortal, we talk about any game, right? You got to think about, okay, what's your dailies? Now, now Hidden Layers is something that's always kind of been in the back of everyone's mind as a daily. Everyone knew you could get um, X amount of normal gems every single day by running them. However, it was one of those things where it's kind of more in the back of your mind, right? Well, now... With this being said, you can kind of track that, and this can be now incorporated into your daily system, and you not know you're not gonna waste your time trying to get more normal gems, because you're gonna be able to easily see when you've hit that mark. Okay. Uh, we've also made improvements to help create locate hidden layers. Um, that, that just sounds so contradictory. Improvements to help locate hidden layers. So why are they a hidden layer that you're trying to help us locate? And doesn't that seem counterintuitive? I don't know. Or maybe just call them like world dungeons, world layers. I don't know. Why I keep calling them hidden layers if you're trying to improve how for us to locate them. You know what I mean? Like, eh, come on. Let's, 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 let's get a little bit more original. That's okay. Uh, essence transfer and extraction improvements. This is a good and quality of life in, improvement. All safe zones will now have an essence transfer merchant within them. The ability to extract multiple legendary items at once can also be performed in the merchant, mer merchant's menu. To do so, click the multi-extract button, blah, 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 and keep going. 
This is great for grinders, right? I do, I've been doing a lot of open world farming when I have been playing Diablo Immortal, and it's kind of cumbersome because what I do is I stockpile all my legendaries, I go fill up my chest, um, I fill up everything else, then I go ahead and I teleport over, and then I mass do legendary extractions, uh, increase the, the amounts of, of the benefits that I'm getting, and then I teleport back to where I was at to go ahead and keep farming. What this means is you can kind of simplify that and it's less time wasted. Uh, I think any development in any game, any type of quality of life change that increases the amount of effectiveness of your time invested in the game is a huge win. This is one of those situations where this does save you a lot of extra steps of going to West March, uh, emptying out your bin, not, not identifying things, or maybe identifying things, but then putting them in there and having to do a lot of inventory management. This allows you to get away from that. I think that's a huge win in my personal opinion, uh, because it's it's kind of the small things, honestly, when you start talking about what, what's going on with the game. Uh, combat globe changes. So here you can see the image, charged core frenzied globe. Okay. So when we talk about this, frenzied and charged core combat globes which previously dropped during the defense of Kragner only. Yes, now can drop any combat instance in Diablo Immortal. Interesting. So increase your critical hit chance to 100% for 10 seconds. So frenzies are awesome. That's better. That's the shrine, right? Charged immediately makes you ultimate, your ultimate available for use. Both of these are very solid. I think it's going to add a kind of a cool dynamic to open world farming because uh, it's just one of those things where you're, you're min maxing. If you're open world farming, the faster you can go, the better, right? This does allow for that, uh, gives you the possibility of it. It gives you a little bit more of that incentivization to go ahead and farm. So once again, we're coming back to there's two new updates that are gonna be incentivizing you to go ahead and play Diablo Immortal. New activity, fishing. Man, this is uh, this is wild, my opinion. Um, so they're gonna add fishing to the game. Uh, apparently it works very well. I've talked to some people who've already played it, said it works great. Uh, there are three zones. Where you can fish, uh, Ashworld Cemetery, Balfin, and Frozen Tundra. Uh, they're noted by a fish icon on the map. Blah 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 blah. You can buy bait. It looks like it appears you can buy the bait with the gold. That's a good little improvement. Add something to spend your gold on. Other than the gambling every day, if you aren't gambling, make sure that you are. Um, but basically, what it's going to tell you is it goes on to tell you that hey, you have an unlimited bait that can be purchased from the fisher, and you can hold 99 pieces in your inventory at a time. So budget your bait wisely. Okay. Um, also, you can see here that reels and deals fish trading. You can see where you can exchange your fish. What do you get from it? You can see you get the uh, the gold and the XP from it, right? Uh, you're also gonna have a angler's log, just like your beast Jerry. Now you're gonna have, or sorry, your best Jerry. Now you're gonna have the angler, the angler's section of that. And that's basically the fisherman section, right? Uh, which is kind of cool. I do think that's an interesting development. I don't know that fishing is ever something that needs to ever be added in any video game. Um, I think personally going out fishing is fun. Um, I can't say I've ever enjoyed fishing in any game and I've played a lot of MMORPGs like WoW and Final Fantasy, which both have fishing. Eh, not great. Um, but overall, it's something different, it's something fresh. We knew fishing was coming. Um, unfortunately, even though Bailed Shot did quit and go play D3 now to get ready for D4, um, it would have been great had he not, so we could have made fun of him even more for being the fisherman, you know, fishing and whatnot. Um, it, it's just kind of a bummer that the locations that you can go fish are unfortunately not right next to the ship, I don't believe. So that would have been even more hilarious, in my opinion. Uh, I do want to talk about one of the best... Uh, Probably one of the things that should have launched with Diablo Immortal that would have made a big impact on the game is your activity scheduler and calendar. For everyone who knows us knows that we are Aftershock United. Uh, we had a massive, massive following right at the beginning of Diablo Immortal. We had over nine clans. We actually had, I want to say it was 11 clans total by the end of it, at the, high, at the height of it. Uh, we had a lot of spreadsheets going around. We had a lot of reminders. We had bot reminders on our Discord, everything. Like, we went all out. We're going to do the same thing for D4 when that launches. However, managing the schedule and calendar was really rough because there was people from all over time zones and people looking at Excel spreadsheets just wasn't going to happen, right? Now they've got it baked into where you can actually have it into the game itself. This is going to help you. Um, I think this is an amazing tool for everyone out there. Uh, definitely don't take this for granted. Utilize it because it's going to allow you to kind of have a better idea of what time things are going to happen. And if you want to do group play, this works better for everyone else, right? 
Uh, it really is one of those massive things where I think this is probably gonna get looked upon uh, from a lot of people and just forgotten or not utilized. I think from a personal standpoint for me, I wish this would have been out at the beginning of the game. We would have heavily utilized it and I think it's an amazing tool. Um, I'm really happy. Once again, they're doing things that allow other people to get freed up on time. You don't have to ping people because you can just simply have it count. I like that. I like, I like this change. Uh, server merges. Oh man, this image. Hell to the server merge. Uh, as you can see here, it's East Asia, Southeast Asia. All right. Um, I don't know how popular those servers are. Honestly, they don't affect me. They really, really don't. Uh, but it's just another thing where they're going to have this. Um, and Hungry Moon limited time event. This is their by far their favorite event. I, 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 I got nothing I can say, about, right? We all know how this event works. You get it so often at this point. Who cares? It is what it is. Overall, though, guys, I think this update is a pretty good one. Um, other than the normal gems, I'm still bummed out about that that change in the game, unfortunately. Uh, makes me really wonder what content they're going to be releasing later on that you have to have that base attribute boost. Because obviously that's going to be something pretty massive. Hopefully it's like a Heliquary boss. It's not something that's going to keep you gate kept in a certain area. Um, but yeah, overall, very interesting update. Uh, very great quality of life changes that are coming to the game. Uh, let me know down in the comments below. What was your favorite update listed or favorite part of this update listed? Because I do feel like overall it has a lot of positivity that's going to make a big difference in the just overall playability and replayability of Diablo Immortal. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure to like and subscribe. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.